Ever wondered what those three letters, ETF, that keep coming up in financial discussions actually mean? Well, let's pull back the curtain and unveil the mystery of ETFs. ETF, my friends, stands for Exchange Traded Fund. Now you might be thinking, what's that in plain English? Well, let's break it down. Imagine you're at a marketplace and you're interested in buying a variety of fruits. But instead of going from vendor to vendor, picking up an apple here, a banana there, what if you could just grab a basket already filled with a mix of fruits? That's essentially what an ETF is in the financial world. An ETF is a type of investment fund that you can buy and sell on a securities exchange, much like you would a stock. But instead of representing a piece of one company, like a stock does, an ETF represents a basket of assets. These assets could be stocks, bonds, commodities, or a mix of these. Now here's the key part. Each ETF is designed to track the performance of a specific index, sector, commodity, or asset. It's like having a mirror that reflects the performance of a particular financial market. So if you invest in an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index, your investment will rise and fall along with that index. This means, with ETFs, you're not trying to beat the market. You're trying to be the market. It's like being in sync with the rhythm of the financial world. But here's the beauty of it all. ETFs offer you a way to buy and sell a basket of assets without having to buy all the components individually. It's a simple, efficient way to diversify your investment portfolio. So in a nutshell, ETFs offer you a way to buy and sell a basket of assets without having to buy all the components individually. Yes, it's that simple and elegant. Did you know there's an ETF for almost anything you can think of? Yes, you heard it right. The world of exchange-traded funds or ETFs is as diverse as it is vast. So let's dive in and discover the many faces of ETFs. First up, we have stock ETFs. These are the most common type of ETF, and they track an index like the S&P 500. Simply put, if you invest in a stock ETF, your investment will mirror the performance of the index it tracks. It's like buying a tiny piece of everything on the stock market, all wrapped up in one neat package. Next, sector ETFs. These track a particular sector of the market, like technology, healthcare, or energy. If you believe that a certain industry is poised for growth, a sector ETF lets you invest broadly in that industry, without having to pick individual stocks. It's a way of betting on the future of an entire sector. Then there are bond ETFs. These funds invest in bonds which are essentially loans that companies or governments issue to raise money. Bond ETFs can provide steady income and are generally considered less risky than stock ETFs. So if you want to play it safe, bond ETFs might be your cup of tea. Commodity ETFs are another type of ETF that focus on commodities like gold, oil, or even corn. If you expect the price of a certain commodity to rise, you can invest in a commodity ETF rather than buying the commodity itself. It's like owning a gold mine without having to dig. Currency ETFs are for those who want to dip their toes in the world of foreign exchange. These ETFs track the value of a specific currency against another. It's a way to invest in the economic strength of a country without having to move there. Finally, we have international ETFs. These give investors exposure to markets outside their home country. If you believe in the growth potential of emerging markets or want to diversify your portfolio geographically, international ETFs are the way to go. But remember, with each type of ETF, there are always risks. Stock ETFs can fluctuate with market volatility, sector ETFs carry the risk of the entire sector underperforming, bond ETFs are subject to interest rate risk, commodity, ETFs are vulnerable to changes in supply and demand, currency, ETFs are affected by economic and political events, and international ETFs can be hit by foreign exchange risk and political instability. So, there you have it. A whirlwind tour of the many faces of ETFs. Each type offers a unique way to invest, and each carries its own set of risks and rewards. Just like people, ETFs come in all shapes and sizes, and it's up to you to find the one that suits your investment style, and goals the best. From gold to global real estate, there's an ETF out there to suit all tastes and investment goals. So take your time, do your research and find the ETF that's just right for you. But how do you know which ETF is the right one for you? A puzzling question indeed. Like a complex jigsaw puzzle, each piece of information fits into a larger picture of your investment journey. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation, but rather a tailored approach that considers your unique financial goals, risk tolerance, investment horizon, and the ETF's expense ratio. Firstly, let's talk about your financial goals. Are you saving for a down payment on a house, funding your child's education, or perhaps planning for a comfortable retirement? Each goal carries a different time frame and risk level. 
If you're saving for a short-term goal, perhaps a bond ETF would be a safer bet. On the other hand, if you're looking at a long-term investment, equity ETFs might be your cup of tea. Now, let's discuss risk tolerance. It's like trying a new spicy dish. Some of us can handle the heat, while others prefer a less fiery experience. If you're someone who can stomach the ups and downs of the market, then perhaps a riskier, high-reward ETF is for you. Otherwise, a more stable, lower-return ETF might suit your palate better. Next up, your investment horizon. Are you in it for the long haul or just a quick sprint? Long-term investors may lean towards ETFs with a focus on growth, while short-term investors might opt for income-generating ETFs. Remember, time is a crucial factor in the world of investing. And then there's the expense ratio. Think of it as a ticket price to the ETF show. It's the ongoing annual cost you'll pay for the management of the fund. Lower expense ratios typically mean more money stays in your pocket. So keep an eye out for those sneaky little numbers. But wait, there's more. You can't pick an ETF based on its cover. You need to delve deeper. Research the ETF's holdings. What sectors does it invest in? How diversified is it? Knowing this can help you understand how the ETF might behave under different market conditions. Performance history is another key player. While past performance isn't a guaranteed predictor of future results, it can give you a sense of the ETF's stability and growth over time. Finally, don't forget to check out the fund manager. A reliable and experienced fund manager can make a world of difference in navigating the choppy waters of the financial markets. Choosing the right ETF is like choosing the right pair of shoes. It needs to fit your needs and comfort level. And just like shoe shopping, it might take a bit of time and effort to find the perfect fit. But once you do, you'll be stepping out in style, ready to stride confidently towards your financial goals. So lace up those investing shoes and start your ETF journey today. Ready to dip your toes into the ETF pool? Let's dive right in and explore the process of investing in ETFs. It's a journey that's easier than you might think. First things first, you'll need to open a brokerage account. Think of this as the gateway to your investment adventure. It's a simple, straightforward process, much like setting up a bank account. You'll have to provide some personal and financial information, but in just a few clicks, you'll have a portal to the world of ETFs. Now, on to the fun part, choosing the right ETF. It's a bit like picking out the perfect outfit. You'll want to consider your investment goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. Are you looking for growth, income, or a mix of both? Are you comfortable with roller coaster like swings, or do you prefer a slow and steady climb? And how long do you plan to stay invested? These are some of the questions that will guide your ETF selection. Once you've found the ETF that fits you like a glove, it's time to place a buy order. It's as simple as typing in the ticker symbol of the ETF, specifying the number of shares you want to buy, and clicking the buy button. Just like that, you're an ETF investor. But the journey doesn't end there. Remember, the world of investing is ever-changing, just like the weather. So, it's important to keep an eye on your investment, monitor its performance, keep abreast of market news, and adjust your strategy if necessary. The beauty of ETFs lies in their flexibility. You can buy and sell them throughout the trading day at market prices, just like individual stocks. So, whether you want to hold on to them for years or trade them frequently, ETFs can accommodate your investment style. Investing in ETFs is as easy as shopping online. With a few clicks, you're in the game. So, are you ready to embark on your ETF investment journey? It's a journey that promises excitement, learning, and potentially rewarding returns. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. But wait, is there a catch to all this? Well, as with any investment, it's essential to understand the costs associated with ETFs. So, let's delve into that. Firstly, you've got management fees. These are the costs associated with running the fund, like the salaries of the people who manage it. Typically, these fees are lower for ETFs than for mutual funds, but they can still take a bite out of your returns. They are expressed as a percentage of the fund's total assets, and while a 1 or 2% fee might not sound like much, over time it can add up. Next, we have brokerage commissions. When you buy or sell an ETF, you usually do so through a broker, and that broker charges a commission for the transaction. The amount can vary widely, but some brokers offer commission-free trades on certain ETFs. So, if you're a frequent trader, these costs can add up quickly and eat into your returns. Lastly, let's talk about bid-ask spreads. This is the difference between the highest price a buyer is willing to pay for an ETF, the bid, and the lowest price a seller is willing to accept, the ask. The wider the spread, the more it can impact your returns, especially if you're trading frequently. 
It's important to remember that these costs can impact the overall returns from your investment. For example, if an ETF has a return of 5%, but you're paying 2% in fees, your net return is only 3%. That's a significant difference. So, how do you avoid these hidden costs? Well, you can't entirely, but you can minimize them by choosing ETFs with low management fees, using brokers that offer commission-free trades, and being mindful of bid-ask spreads. Like any other investment, ETFs come with their own set of expenses. The key is to understand them and factor them into your investment decision. So keep these costs in mind when you're considering which ETFs to invest in, because in the world of investing, every penny counts. So, are ETFs the golden ticket to investment success? That's the question we've been exploring today. The answer? Well, it's not a simple yes or no. It's a bit more nuanced than that. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned. ETFs or exchange-traded funds are investment vehicles that track an index, sector, commodity or a variety of other asset classes. They're like a mixed bag of goodies, offering you a taste of everything from stocks to bonds, commodities to currencies and even some exotic flavors like real estate or emerging markets. The beauty of ETFs lies in their diversity and flexibility. They allow you to invest in a wide range of assets, all bundled up in one neat package, which can be bought or sold throughout the day, just like individual stocks. This flexibility means you can respond swiftly to market changes, taking advantage of opportunities as they arise. We also looked at the different types of ETFs available. There are broad market ETFs that track major indices, sector-specific ETFs that focus on specific industries, and thematic ETFs that follow unique trends or concepts, bond ETFs, commodity ETFs, and even ETFs and even inverse ETFs that profit when markets fall. The variety is staggering and offers you endless possibilities to customize your investment portfolio to match your specific goals and risk tolerance. But, as with all investments, ETFs are not without their challenges. Choosing the right ETF requires careful research and consideration. It's not just about picking the one with the highest returns. You need to understand the underlying assets, the risks involved, the fund's strategy, its performance history, and how it fits into your overall investment strategy. And then there's the cost factor. While ETFs are generally more cost-effective than mutual funds, they do come with their own set of fees and expenses. Management fees, transaction costs, bid-ask spreads, these can all add up and eat into your returns. So it's crucial to factor these costs in when making your investment decisions. So, is investing in ETFs a walk in the park? Not quite, it requires knowledge, research, and a clear understanding of your financial goals and risk tolerance. And while this video has hopefully given you a good starting point, it's always a good idea to seek professional advice if you're unsure or need more detailed guidance. Remember, the world of ETFs is vast and varied, but with knowledge and careful consideration, it can be navigated successfully. So, ready to embark on your ETF journey?